Hello, and welcome to this worship broadcast from First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls. Thanks for worshiping with us on this seventh Sunday of Easter. If you'd like to follow along in the bulletin, it's available at flcsf.org backslash bulletins. Pastor John Christofferson will lead today's worship. Pastor Jeff Backer will preach this morning's sermon. Welcome to worship here today at First Lutheran Church. It is good for us to be gathered together on this seventh Sunday in the season of Easter. If you are a guest joining us by telecast today, I want to extend a warm welcome to you today. To follow along with our liturgy and our music, you can find the bulletin on our website at flcsf.org forward slash media, and under that tab, you can find bulletins and announcements. While it may seem odd for you to sing uh, over the telecast or with the telecast, it allows us to gather together as the body of Christ and to worship together even though we can't be in the same physical location. I'd like to thank our contemporary musicians for being with us today. They are all properly social distanced, uh, and so we thank them for bringing us the gospel and music today. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that our ministry continues here through this time of distancing, even though the building is closed. Uh, Please check the website for the most up-to-date information. Also, you will find there numerous devotions, Bible studies, uh, a lot of resources, family, uh, youth and family resources, Faith 5 videos, a lot of ways for you to engage in this time with your family um, as we are physically distant. Also remember that we are here to serve and to pray and to encourage you in faith. So if you are in need, please do not hesitate to contact the church and uh, we will uh, help that need in any way that we can. I'd also like to announce that uh, starting May 15th, Pastor Lars has started his sabbatical for three months. He will be gone until August 15th. A sabbatical is a time for uh, rest and renewal and uh, some study and so we wish Pastor Lars well in this time as uh, he takes this time away from us And finally, today I'd like to take pause to remember and consider the freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. On this Memorial Day weekend, we we remember and we honor those that have given the ultimate sacrifice and for those that have served and are still serving to protect the freedoms that we enjoy. If you know or you meet a veteran or an active service member, thank them for their service. And now we prepare for worship with our prelude. We invite you to sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. All music used in today's We invite you to sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. All music used in today's service is printed in the bulletin that's available online. Glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou Sing ever bless, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are kind. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy. Teach us how. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the, teach us how, teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, churning us from our sin to live for you alone. Grant us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus the Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and enjoy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. 
The first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking at the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We'll read together the psalm responsively. From Psalm uh, 68, verses 1 through 10 and 32 to 35. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is the name, rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom but the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it, in your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading comes from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory in God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, 
will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I would now like to invite all the children a little closer to their screen for the children's message this morning. So, over the past couple months, I've really missed sports. It's been really weird not being able to watch anything. I've missed the games, I've missed the, the last second shots, all the scores, the rivalries, and the star athletes competing against each other. And normally spring is a great time to, to be a sports fan, but also to play sports. And I'm sure there's a lot of question right now what sports, and if any, will even be happening. And now think back to your last season. In sports, we often compete against each other. We want to see who is the best of the best. And sometimes we'll get a trophy or a medal or a plaque and just saying how well we did in that. You may even get a, even get a lot of attention from other people for how well you did and you may be celebrated. Now, this is what it means to be glory, to be praised by others. The Bible has, a, has many examples of glory, and one specifically is Palm Sunday, which, which seems like a while ago, but we shouted Hosanna and we waved palm branches. And Jesus was entering the city of Jerusalem, and the people cheered him because they thought uh, he would be the one to release them and free them from the Romans, and that he would be uh, leading up a great battle against the Romans to free the people of the region. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is talking about glory. All throughout Jesus' life on earth, he glorified God in everything that he did, whether he was preaching to people or praying with people or even healing people. So in this passage, Jesus is asking God to glorify him in all that he does and glorify him in his presence. We know that from Palm Sunday that the people were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, but then a short time after, they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. For Jesus, the true glory is the cross, where he died so that our sins would be forgiven. But Jesus' death was not the end. Instead, he defeated sin and death and was resurrected. The glory of God was Jesus on the cross. Jesus is the way to receive, eter re receive eternal life and to be with God. This is the promise that we have been given in our baptism, so we may trust in it and cling to it forever. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for us, glorifying your name. Watch over us and keep us safe this week. In your name, amen. Please join us in our gospel acclamation. gospel for today comes from the gospel of St. John in the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, 
since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave to me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. From the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. When I was growing up, I really didn't watch much professional sports. It really wasn't my thing. In fact, my wife would tell you it still isn't my thing. However, when I was about 14 years old, so in about 1984, a player came onto the scene playing for the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan. Watching the Bulls was one of the only sports I can remember watching fairly regularly as a kid. Because watching the Bulls, and especially Michael Jordan play, or MJ, was just so enjoyable. Michael Jordan was known for his incredible scoring ability, but even more so, many remember his ability to entertain in his play. Jordan is known for his leaping ability, competing in many dunk slam dunk contests, he could glide that 15 feet from the free throw line all while gyrating his arms and his legs with that signature tongue hanging out as he performed amazing feats of physical agility. His great athleticism earned him the title of Air Jordan or his airness. He was amazing. In late 1984, Jordan received an endorsement contract from Nike and the Air Jordan shoe was released. The Air Jordan shoe line is still the single most popular and profitable product line ever produced by Nike. Now, Michael Jordan went on to play for 15 seasons in the NBA, and by many is still considered to be the best professional basketball player in history. But even if you do not agree with that statement, reported recently was that Michael Jordan has the highest net worth of any NBA athlete in history with over $2.1 billion in personal assets. At its core, what has stood out for me in thinking about this story of Michael Jordan, as he has been in the news again recently, is how much our economy and our culture is impacted when we glorify somebody. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you this day from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today now is the third consecutive Sunday that our gospel reading has been taken from Jesus' words that he spoke while in the upper room with his disciples in Jerusalem on the night that he was betrayed. Only John's witness has preserved these precious words in such detail. In fact, the gospel of John devotes half of chapter 13 and all of chapters 14 through 17, or if you look at it this way, over 20% of the entire gospel to these words that Jesus spoke that night. Obviously, John believes these are words that are important for us to hear. For the last two Sundays, we have looked closely at what Jesus spoke to his disciples as recorded in chapter 14. Two weeks ago, Pastor Lars spoke of Jesus' words, let not your hearts be troubled. And last week, Pastor John, the words, if you love me, you will keep my commands. It has been good to hear these texts in small bites so that we can savor them. So today we jump to chapter 17 and our attention is directed in the first 11 verses. And there's a slight change in the meaning behind what Jesus is speaking here. 
The whole of chapter 17 is a prayer. It's a prayer that Jesus prays as a part of what is known as his farewell discourse. This text is the traditional text used for the seventh Sunday in the season of Easter. And while these words came from that night before Jesus' trial and his crucifixion, they are used late in the season of Easter in conjunction with the text from Acts that tells of Jesus' ascension, his being taken to the Father, and to permanently establish his kingdom over all things. The disciples are listening to Jesus speak, but now his words are not directed at them. We hear that Jesus lifts his eyes to heaven and he speaks to his heavenly Father. So these words that Jesus speaks, these are not a lesson or a sermon. This was no time for the disciples to be interrupting with their questions as they had done over and over. Jesus prays for what is about to happen the most important event in human history, both on earth and in heaven. In the fifth century AD, the Bishop of Alexandria, whose name was Clement, said that with this prayer, Jesus was acting like the high priest for his people. And ever since then, this text has also been known as Jesus' high priestly prayer. Now this, I think, is a good way for us to begin to think about how we should hear this prayer of God the Son praying to God the Father. Jesus is the great high priest. Now in the Old Testament, there were three holy offices that had been instituted. The prophets, the priests, and the kings. No one assumed these offices by their own merit. Only those called by God through the prophets and properly appointed entered entered into these offices. Now, although Jesus is the perfect fulfillment of all three of these, it's the office of priest that most grabs our attention here. The work of the priest was to mediate for humankind to God. Priests carried out their work in the temple where they would take the sacrifices of people that would bring them and present them to God on behalf of the people. There were thank offerings that were burned, there were memorial offerings that were waived, but most importantly, there were sin offerings that were sacrificed. The priest was the chosen servant of God who would take the sacrifice from the sinner, present it to God, sacrifice it, throw some of the blood of the animal onto the curtain in front of the Holy of Holies in the temple, and then throw some of the blood onto the sinner, signifying that the sinner's sacrifice had been received. This was the work of the priest. But there were many priests, but only one high priest. The high priest didn't mediate for a man or a woman. The high priest mediated for the whole nation of God's people, collectively. And the high priest would carry out one very special offering to the Lord every year on the Day of Atonement. No one else entered into the temple except the high priest. He alone would take one animal, a lamb, into the temple and he would sacrifice it at the altar. And then the high priest would take the blood of that lamb behind the curtain into the space known as the Holy of Holies and pour it over the Ark of the Covenant, which was the very specific place believed to be where God himself was found. It was in this way that the high priest would atone for the sins of the whole nation by one sacrifice once for all. But actually, it shouldn't be too hard for us to understand why Jesus is our great high priest. He is the great mediator between humankind and God. But he offers one sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, a sacrifice far more significant than any sacrifice that any high priest had ever given. Jesus is not only the high priest, but he himself is the sacrifice. He offers himself For he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now in the upper room, just before Jesus gives himself over to be tried, beaten, and crucified, Jesus prays. Here we see our great high priest, and even more so, our Redeemer, interceding for his disciples and for all who will believe in him through their preaching. 
First, Jesus prays for himself. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Jesus begins by qualifying why he has come into the world. He declares that his time has come and that time is for God to glorify the Son. Now the statement is in contrast to previous occasions when Jesus told his disciples repeatedly that his, his hour had not yet come as they had followed him in his ministry. Now Jesus says the hour has come. The great hour to which the divine clock has been set when the Son of God would be crucified. To glorify someone means to give honor, dignity, respect that can be seen by others. It is about being lifted up and recognized. It is a public thing. It's not a private thing. Jesus is asking to be glorified so that his glory may be seen by others and in seeing his glory that they would worship him. And in worshiping him, they will worship the one who sent him. So as the disciples listen to Jesus and they hear him pray, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. What do you think they were thinking? Were were they thinking that the time had finally arrived for Jesus to do what they had hoped he would do all along? We hear this in our Acts text for today. Had the hour actually come for him to lead the Jewish people to reestablish the throne of David and take his rightful place as king? Had the hour come for Jesus to organize the revolution to overthrow the Roman government and clean up the corruption that had been going on in the temple? Well, this is often the way that we think of glory and being glorified, isn't it? Power, success, prosperity. Glorify me, God, with a pretty face, a successful career, plentiful possessions, a fat wallet or 401k, so that others will show me the honor, dignity, and respect that I deserve. And by the way, God, look at all of the good that I have done in the world and accomplished in the world. And God, I will glorify you by being humble. I will give you the credit for all of it. This is the way that we think that God would glorify us. In 1518, Martin Luther wrote his Heidelberg Disputation where he teaches on the distinction between a theologian of glory and a theologian of the cross. The theologian of glory seeks to show himself as having earned God's favor, thereby being glorified to receive God's grace, while a theologian of the cross sees themselves a sinner not able to do anything in matters of salvation except to confess Christ crucified and risen. But Jesus is about to be arrested, bound, accused, and in this God will glorify him. Jesus will be despised and rejected, crucified, died and buried, and in this God the Father will glorify the Son. But God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, and God's will is surely not our will. We pray that God would profit a person so that they would gain the whole world, but God says, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world but forfeits his life? Ah, but if that same man were to lose everything, goods, fame, honor, spouse, and home, and end up homeless, but through this he comes to repentance and faith, in Jesus Christ and dies and goes to heaven, then he is glorified and God is glorified and all of heaven rejoices. But who actually prays for this? God's ways are not our ways. Jesus is glorified in terrible suffering and in death. This is what the Father sent the Son to do in the world. And in his perfect and willing obedience to the Father's will, the Father is glorified. Jesus said, I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. 
This is why Jesus can speak of his being lifted up on the cross of all places as the beacon of salvation which draws people to himself. He does not shy away from death because that is the very purpose for which the Father has sent him. And God raises Jesus from the dead and in this the Son, Jesus Christ, is glorified. We hear that he ascends to the Father. He is seated at the right hand of God and he is given the name that is above all names. And that name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is the glory of God the Father. Now as I was thinking about this, I couldn't help but notice, however, that in all of this, Jesus is no further ahead than he has always been. This is not a glory that is bestowed to the Son that he didn't already previously have. This is the glory that he had with God the Father before the world existed. And Jesus set aside that glory, that position that was rightfully his for a time, and he tells us that the hour has now come for this glory to be restored. So clearly there is a bigger purpose in all of this. Clearly the Father sent the Son into the world to suffer and die, and the Son came into the world and accomplished the Father's will, not for the sake of his own glory or for the Father's glory. He did this for your sake, so that you may see his works, his glory, and you would worship him alone. Glory is all over the place in this prayer. And we would do well to pay attention to it. The Father glorifies the Son and gives us to him. That is Jesus carrying with him all who belong to the Father as he makes his way to the cross to die. The Son glorifies the Father by doing what the Father sent him to do. This includes giving us his Father's words and ultimately giving you eternal life. Eternal life here and now, not in some far off time and place, not after you have taken your last breath in this life. Eternal life is for you now in my declaring it by Christ's authority. And Jesus prays for you that you would know this, that you would know the one true God. He prays, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. And now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. The Father and the Son are in such a perfect unity that the Father gives his word to the Son so that the Son may speak this word into your ear today. And by his word, claim you as his own. And the Son speaks his Father's word to all the Father has given him. And the Son gives those who were at once estranged from God and dead in sin. He brings you back to the Father alive as a child of God. So what is this that Jesus prays for his disciples, for you and for me, for all who would come to believe and trust in his word? This is nothing less than eternal life. That you would know God, the true God, and Jesus Christ whom he sent. This is Jesus' prayer. And these are holy words being spoken to us before Pentecost. Having heard this prayer, we can now anticipate with joy the coming of the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son who makes the gospel of Jesus Christ known, who gives us the knowledge of the one true God. And that, my friends, is the good news. So what shall we say to this? A good Lutheran question. What else can we say but to confess soli Deo Gloria, to God alone the glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll have a time of silence for reflection. That's followed by our song of the day, All My Relatives.
Listen, my sister, listen, my brother. So many features, so many colors. I have not loved you like I should love you if I believe that God is love. Every face on my relatives, every race on my relatives, every place on my relatives. Hear creation sing, one with everything. We share the hurting Where there is justice We share the justice Where there is mercy We share the mercy If we believe that God is love Every face on my relatives Every race on my relatives Every place on my relatives Hear creation sing, one with everything. Where there is suffering, we share the suffering. Where there is praising, we share the praising. Where there is freedom, we share the freedom. If we believe that God is love, everything. Every race on my relatives, every place on my relatives, hear creation sing, one with everything, every face on my relatives, every race on my relatives, every place on my relatives, hear creation sing, one with everything. With the whole church, let us confess together our holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, bless be the tie that binds. Despite the criticism and self-centeredness, all the agendas that ruin and rile with our world, the pridefulness that seeks to divide and distract our focus upon you, Yes, upon Christ and his cross. Grant us a unity of heart and mind that would set our chart and compass in following your call to be an Easter people, serving in your spirit of a sacrificial love for all people. In the words of St. Paul, 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. For you are above all and through all and in all. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who holds all things together in pierced hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, we give you thanks and praise for those who've laid down their lives, all men and women, for the sake of freedom and justice, on behalf of these United States. We thank you for such freedom fighters, for their courage and commitment as sign and symbol of Christ, who first laid down his life for us for our forgiveness of sin, and yes, even a glory that has shone throughout your world upon a cross for all people. Yes, one nation and one world under you. Yes, on this Memorial Day, we remember loved ones, friends, and family, all who have laid down their lives for freedom. Yes, for freedom, Christ has set us free. And so through word and deed, may these, your United States, make freedom ring. Yes, for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as one family in Christ, we pray for our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters in you. All who struggle with disease and need your tender care. For Janice Campbell and Sonia Carlberg, Joyce Erickson and Bob Janowski, Ryan Kruger, Jane Nelson, all those whom we now name in our hearts. Especially mindful of those who serve in the front lines of bringing comfort and healing in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray also for a special measure of your resurrecting hope of the many in our family of First Lutheran who mourn these days, the recent death of loved ones, for family and friends of Eleanor Emil, for Lee and Jan Halstenson, Paul and Barb, and Corey Halstenson and family, at the death of a beloved mother and grandmother in Gladys Halstenson, for Cindy and Charlie Timmer and family on the death of their son Luke, for the family of Jean and Betty Erickson, at the death of Jean's brother, Milton, for family and friends of Donna Ross, for family and friends of Madeline Houghton, for Birgit Peterson at the death of her brother, Mark, for Stan and Norma Schmidt at the death of Stan's sister, Carol Saylor, for John and Marcia Kittleson at the death of their brother-in-law, Del Clausen, and for Dick Brown and family at the death of his wife, Sue. All your children, Heavenly Father, into your tender bosom gather. Lord, in your mercy. Your o oh Lord, we look toward the slanting light of this new morning, toward the Dakota Prairie's horizon of everything that can be, asking what ministry or mission, a message of hope and blessed assurance, you call us afresh this day to share in the wonder of your word, a word still made flesh through us, Yes, what shape waits in the seeds of us that you planted in our baptism, especially for our high school and college grads commencing now into new horizons to grow and spread their branches across a future sky. May their deep passions and gifts come together with the deep hungers and needs of your world. Lord, in your mercy. And so in bold confidence in your amazing grace, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today, we receive the offering by inviting you to give on our website at flcsf.org forward slash give or by sending your gift in the mail. Also, we want to give thanks for those uh, sponsoring our broadcast this morning on Kello FM, sponsored in memory of Erling and Clara Haugo, who would have celebrated their wedding anniversary on May 29th. It's made possible by earnings of a gift to our First Lutheran Church Foundation. Today's closed captioning is given by members who are thankful for First Lutheran Church, our family, our pastors. And closed captioning is so important, making God's message acceptable 
and accessible, acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, especially those who are deaf, those who are hard of hearing. And also today's telecast on KSFY is sponsored by the family of Howard Bish in honor of his 80th birthday on April 11th and in memory of parents Herman and Frieda Bish and Peter and Anna Jessen, as well as siblings and extended family members who passed away. To God be the glory for this life and the next. And finally, now listen to the voluntary and prayerfully consider your gift and support of ministry and mission through First Lutheran. Ragged traveler, rest your feet. There is room for you. Wandering child, rest your fears. There is love for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you've raised us to new life in Christ, grant us your Holy Spirit, that we might hear and share your promise of new life with all who are in need. Amen. Gathered now by your Holy Spirit, let us pray, O Lord, the way that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.
Aleluia. Thanks for joining us for this worship broadcast from First Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Media ministry at First Lutheran relies on the generosity of sponsors. You can donate or learn about sponsoring a broadcast at flcsf.org backslash give or by calling 605-336-3734. Until next time, may the love of God and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you.